Hello, it's Matthew here, and we're looking at question four, which is worth 30 marks. So we're shown a table that shows how many students got each grade from a distinction, higher merit, merit, and achieved. We're then asked to complete the pie chart to show this information, and the sector for distinction has already been given. So the first thing to do is to have a look at the pie chart. And when you have a pie chart, the first thing to note is obviously it is a circle, and there are 360 degrees in total in a circle. 40 of those degrees have already been taken by distinction. So we need to work out how many degrees should higher merit, merit and achieved get based on the number of students who got each grade. We have a way to do that, and that's by putting the number of students who got each grade over the total number of students and then multiplying by 360. As of course, it's 360 degrees in the entire thing. So this will tell us how many degrees each of the other grades should get from higher merit, merit and achieved. So first of all, we have to work out how many students there are in total. So we had eight students who got a distinction, 12 who got a higher merit, 39 who got a merit and 13 who got an achieved grade. So let's add all these together. And adding these together and we get 72. So 72 is the total number of students. So now we're going to start with the amount of people who got a higher merit. And we're told that 12 people got a higher merit. So the amount of people who got that grade is 12. Over the total number of students, which is 72, as we worked out just there. And we multiply that by 360. So let's try that now. And that gives us 60. So that means a higher merit section in the pie chart should have 60 degrees of the circle. So now let's do the same for merit and achieved, and then we'll draw them all in at the end. So 39 people achieved a merit grade out of 72 students in total. And once again, we multiply this by 360, and now we can work out how many degrees we should give to the merit section in the pie chart. And this gives us 195, so that means 195 degrees in the pie chart should go to the merit section. And now finally, we'll do the same thing for achieved. And 13 students achieved a grade of achieved. So it's 13 over 72 multiplied by 360. And that gives us 65 degrees for achieved. So now you can use your protractor to draw in 60 degrees, 195 degrees and 65 degrees for the three sectors, higher merit, merit and achieved. I'm going to do it on the screen now. However, I don't have a protractor here on the screen, so I'm gonna to have to do it slightly differently. However, using a protractor in real life is much easier. So I'm gonna write out this and also my formula. And the way to do it is get your protractor, put the line on the bottom along this line here, and then measure 60 degrees for the area that will be the higher merit section. So I have 60 degrees in here. Of course, when you use your protractor, make sure that there's 60 degrees in there. And that's my section for higher merit. So now we're going to do the same thing, but for merit, and this time it's 195 degrees. And the straight black line at the end of the compass will go along this line here. And that's 195 degrees there. And that's the section for merit. And then you can double check that there should be 65 degrees left over for the section for achieved. Make sure to double check that as if there isn't 65 degrees, you have made a mistake somewhere. But hopefully you haven't and everything is correct with 60 degrees for higher merit, 195 degrees for merit and 65 degrees for achieved. Now just to say that there, are, that there are other ways to work out how many degrees you need for higher merit, merit and achieved. I used the formula that I had on the screen a few minutes ago. However, each of the other ways will also give you 60 for higher merit, 195 for merit, and 65 for achieved. So whichever way you prefer, you can use. However, in my opinion, following the formula is the simplest and most, stri and most straightforward way. So that's our answer for part A, and that was worth 15 marks. Now let's have a look at part B of the question. So part B tells us that a large number of people took a reading test. The scores were normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 20. So then we're asked to use the empirical rule to answer parts B, part one, and B, part two. So B, part one, 
wants us to work out the percentage of people that had scores between 80 and 120. And of course, we have to use the empirical rule to answer this. So the empirical rule is a rule in statistics that tells us that 68% of the values lie within one standard deviation of the mean. So let me try and illustrate that to you on the screen. So the mean in our case here is 100 and the standard deviation is 20. So that means if we do 100 plus 20, that obviously gives us 120. So we'll say that's here. And then we can do 100 minus 20, which gives us 80. So 100 minus 20, 80, and 100 plus 20 is 120. And that's going to be within one standard deviation of the mean, as one standard deviation is 20, and the mean is 100. So I've plus 20 with the mean and taken away 20 from the mean, which has given me 80 and 120. So the empirical rule says that within one standard deviation of the mean, 68% of values will lie between both of those numbers. So essentially, between 80 and 120, 68% of the values will lie between both of those numbers. So from 80 to 100, that's one standard deviation, 20. And from 100 to 120, that's also one standard deviation, which again is 20. So that means between 80 and 120, there should be 68% of people with scores between both of those numbers, as they lie within one standard deviation of the mean. So as values from 80 to 120 lie within one standard deviation of the mean, 68% of people scored between 80 and 120, and that's from the empirical rule. So the answer is 68%. So that's B part one. So B part two says that the top 2.5% of scores were given a grade of exceptional, and we have to work out the lowest score needed to get this grade. So let's go up and have a look. So the empirical rule said that within one standard deviation of the mean, you had 68% of all the values, so of all the people in this case. The empirical rule also says that within two standard deviations, 95% of all values lie, or in this case, within two standard deviations of the mean, 95% of people will lie within the two standard deviations. So this is going to be two standard deviations from the mean. And this will be also two standard deviations from the mean. So that means from 100 to here, that's two standard deviations. And from 100 to here, that's also two standard deviations. And we know that one standard deviation is 20, so two will be 40. So we can do 100 minus 40 down here, which is obviously 60. And we can do 100 plus 40 up here, which is obviously 140. Now, the empirical rule says that within two standard deviations of the mean, 95% of values lie. So that means between 60 and 140, we have 95% of all the values, which, of course, leaves us with the other 5% of people. So of the other 5%, 2.5% will be lower than 60 and 2.5% will be higher than 140. And remember, we're trying to find the lowest mark needed to be in the top 2.5%. So we've shown that from 140 up, that's where the top 2.5% of people are. As between 60 and 140, you have 95% of people. And then you have the 2.5% that are lower than 60. So that leaves us with the people that are above 140 will be in the top 2.5%. So they're within two standard deviations of the mean, the positive side. So obviously you're gonna be plusing the two standard deviations on, which we did, so it was 100 plus two times 20, which is 100 plus 40, so 140. So the lowest mark needed is 140, and that will get you in the top 2.5% of people who took the test. So just to recap, the mean is 100, and we're gonna be plusing twice the standard deviation, as this will leave us with the top 2.5%. If we wanted the bottom 2.5%, we take it away, but it's the top 2.5%, so we're adding it on. So 100 plus 2 times 20 is 100 plus 40, and 100 plus 40 is 140. So the lowest score needed to get in the top 2.5% of scores to get the grade of exceptional is 140. So parts 1 and 2 there were worth a combined 10 marks. And now we're going to have a look at the next part of the question, part C.
So part C says that the scores of six people on the test were 104, 82, 94, 113, 98 and 105. And now we have to find the range and the standard deviation of the numbers. So let's find the range first. And the range is simply the difference from the largest number to the smallest number. So the largest number here is 113 and the smallest number is 82. So we're going to take away 82 from 113 and that will give us 31. So therefore the range is 31. So that's nice and straightforward. Now let's try and find the standard deviation, which takes a small bit more time. You have two ways to do this. You can either use a formula in the formula and tables book or do it on your calculator. But I'm going to do it on the calculator. So I recommend taking out your calculator and following me along on the screen to work out the standard deviation of these six numbers. So if you have a Casio calculator, it should be the exact same as the method on the screen. There's the older ones or the newer ones, but both methods are very, very similar. So you should be able to follow along and complete the question to work out the standard deviation. So the first thing to do is you need to put your calculator into statistics mode. And to do that, you're gonna click menu and then two. And then you should get this option on your screen here and it's gonna be one. And then you'll have an X in the top and then the numbers one, two, three, four, all the way down on the left-hand side. So now we're gonna type in our numbers. So it's 104, 82, 94, 113, 98, and finally 105. And once you've all those in, you can clear. Now, if you're on the older version, you're gonna click shift and then the first button. But if you're on the newer version here, you're gonna click option. And then you're gonna click two for one variable calculation. And then you get a load of different options here, but the one you want is the one with the Sigma X, which is the second one from the bottom here, which is 9.758. So it's the one with this symbol here. And it says that's equal to 9.758 and it continues on but we only want it to one decimal place and to one decimal place that's equal to 9.8 so therefore the standard deviation of those six people is 9.8 so the range of the six people who took the test was 31 and their standard deviation was 9.8 so part C of the question was worth five marks. That's the final part of this question and the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.